it works against any explosive material that uh, has an abrupt eruption, if a pipe breaks or anything like that. And when the pressure, it's, it's activated by flow, flow and pressure. So when the, when the, uh, when the blow comes, it basically closes up. And if there's a drill pipe inside, it closes against the drill pipe. If there's nothing in it, it closes against itself. Uh, this, just for demonstration purposes, uh, does not have the rubber on it. The, 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 the valve that you have there, it has a rubber seal and it does, that's the reason why it doesn't allow water. So this is basically the idea. And when they drill for oil, they circulate mud. The mud is a high density, high gravity uh, liquid with quartz and uh, lubricants for the drill uh, bit, for the diamond, and it, it goes inside through the center of the drill pipe and returns to the casing and the riser. Riser is the pipe that connects the, the blower preventer to the oil rig. And in the case of Deepwater Horizon, it was 5,000 feet, the distance between the oil platform and the bottom of the ocean. Between the bottom of the ocean and the oil pocket was another 18,000 feet. And uh, uh, a gallon of hydrocarbons at this uh, uh, depth increases in volume 100 fold every 1,000 feet. You think of it as like a champagne or, or a soda bottle that you shake up and you open up abruptly the... the so the, the well, the Macando well started uh, flowing at 8.45 on August, on uh, April 10th, uh, uh, 2010, and uh, the flow was 54 gallons a second. Uh, and these hydrocarbons enter the riser, and when you have each gallon expand 100 fold every 1,000 feet, you have 5,000 feet, so one gallon becomes 500 gallons on top. If you have 54 gallons a second, you, say, you figure out that these guys never had a chance. I mean, they, they, uh, in the first 20 seconds of uh, the, the well flowing, there was enough gas to explode the, the, uh, the oil platform. And this one requires no activation from any person. Uh, current technology, you have to press a button and then it shuts off if everything works well. The problem is that by the time you know what happens, 20,000 feet or 18,000 or even 5,000 feet downstairs, uh, in, in the, at the bottom of the uh, riser, uh, this one shuts it up automatically. So that's, that's the idea. And this is how it works. It's very simple and it can be activated. It can have sensors in it. So immediately when, you, when it senses flow, it rings the bells up uh, and lets the people know that uh, something went uh, wrong and there's a problem there. So that's basically what it is. And I thank you for your help and uh, you guys uh, helped humanity in, in a very substantial way by letting us uh, test this thing. So we hope that it will stop many, many fires from now on. Uh, blowouts happen about a hundred times a year. Uh, the Deepwater Horizon was one of the most egregious uh, uh, breaches and uh, lots of people died. Uh, since then, about so it's another oil platform uh, uh, went to the bottom of the ocean, also in Gulf of Mexico. And when you think that one of these platforms cost, the deep water horizon costed $590 million without including supplies. Just, just the ship by itself. Uh, it had dynamic positioning and uh, uh, it was uh, quite a, a piece of equipment that uh, basically was done by, by, by uh, small not a small explosion, a big explosion. Uh, uh, we hope that uh, those will not happen again. Oh. That's pretty cool. Right. So how yeah. big are those? Is that, uh, is that this is half scale. Different? The smallest one will be about 10 inches. Yeah. This is four and a half. Uh, and the deep water horizon was 24 inches, about this big. Yeah. Interesting. 24 inch pipe. Right. Very cool. Yeah.